What is going on everybody, Estas here, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I did today on the 16th of July in 2019 in terms of my trades, as well as going over a couple of stocks and ETFs that I've written right here on this little piece of paper that I'm personally watching and looking to trade here in the month of July. So if you find value in this video, if you find it helpful, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And feel free to join our Strive Smart Discord group chat and our Strive Smart Facebook group. If you want to be further connected with the Strive Smart community and me personally, all of those are linked down below in the description box. So without further ado, guys, let's get right into it here. Starting off with the S&P 500, the SPX, the 500 largest publicly traded U.S. company. So we can see we closed at $3,004 today. It was actually a red day. We were down $10.26 at the close, down 0.34%. The Dow Jones Industrial Average also had a red day, not as bad of a red day as the S&P, but it was down $23.53, down 0.09% at the close. And the NASDAQ, although it does say it's down only $1.25 right now, that is the future. The NASDAQ was actually down 0.4%, I believe, around 40 to 50 points at the close of the market today. And you can see that if I go to the one day, one minute, you can see the sell off that we did have throughout the day today. We hit a low at about 79.24. And if we go back to the 184 hour chart, you guys can actually see we hit that milestone of $8,000 on the NASDAQ, which is very, very good. So let's go back to the S&P very quickly. Let's break down some technicals with the S&P. We'll go to the Dow, then the NASDAQ for the market update portion of today's video. So you guys can clearly see at this point that the markets have um, temporarily found a top, right? And this, um, you know, it makes sense to me, honestly, guys, because the markets, ever since we broke out of that wedge that I was talking about in previous videos uh, last week and over the weekend, you know, the markets have been soaring, right? We had one, Two, actually, no, we had about one, two, three, four, and then, you know, four and a half days um, of straight up green day after green day after green day, all time high after all time high after all time high. And what that was doing was it was pushing the S&P to overbought status more and more every single day in terms of the RSI. And you guys can see, you know, once we hit this uh, overbought spot on the RSI, you guys can see it here. We plateaued a little bit. RSI came down and then we popped up to that all, uh, all time high at 37. We got to the uh, overextended part on the RSI again, and now we're finally dumping here on the RSI as the markets are pulling back. So in my opinion, you know, on the 20 day one hour chart here, this is a temporary healthy pullback on the S&P 500. And we're still holding that 50 SMA support that's been a support over the past couple of weeks, which is a good sign that the uptrend is still intact here, guys. So tomorrow, what I'm looking for is to see whether or not we hold this level on the 20 day one hour. Do we gap up, which would be very good. That would be a confirming sign that the uptrend is continuing. Or are we going to break? And this would be a very key technical break here, a break below the 50 SMA. And that would honestly start to break us back into the 2,900 level. If that does end up happening, that would be a pretty bearish move. So another key thing that I'm seeing here is the S&P actually closed above not only that 50 SMA that we just talked about, but it also closed above the 3,000 level, which was an old resistance and is now a new support, as you guys can see. And if I zoom out a bit and uh, get this little drawing tool right here, let me show you guys exactly what I'm talking about, right? You guys can see it clearly held that level that I just drew out, old resistance here as a new support in the close at the close of the market today, really for the latter half of the day. You guys can see we got a double bottom um, at $3,000, and then we got that breakout of the 180 and the 50 SMA on the intraday chart, which is a pretty good way to close, but then we got that dump, which still we're at a higher low from the previous, but the dump towards the close, that's not too good of a way to close in terms of, uh, you know, potentially recovering to the upside tomorrow. I much rather have, I much rather would have closed, um, 
you know, at 3,007, 3,008 on a nice little upswing, but we didn't get that. But the positive thing is we are at a higher low from 3,000, and we did close above 3,000 in general, which is a very key spot that the S&P needs to hold above, um, you know, for this uptrend to stay intact. So at this point, again, guys, you know, our site's overbought. This is nothing more, um, you know, this is just simply a healthy pullback in my opinion. And, and guys, you know, if we break 3,000, a spot to watch, um, you know, on the 184 hour is going to be at about 2980, um, right? 2980, this was an old resistance, um, you know, back a couple weeks ago. Now it's a support level that would also put us on top of that 50 SMA support here on the 184 hour chart. So those are just a couple of things that I'm watching on the S&P 500 right now. If we're going to the Dow Jones, you guys can see it seems like we found a temporary top here as well, right? We hit that all time high at about 27,398. Let me just double check and see if that was today. Yup, it was today. You guys can see, you know, we hit that nearly 27,400. We dumped all the way down to about 27,290. Um, and then we just consolidated pretty much for the rest of the day around like that 27,300-ish level, right? And if we go back to the 20-day one hour, you can see, you know, this is just going to um, according to the pattern here, right? You notice every time we We've popped to a high, you know, we've consolidated a couple of days, we've pulled back and we've retested that 50 SMA support before continuing the uptrend, right? And that's something that I'm watching here, you know, we've plateaued. Now, maybe we dump tomorrow, maybe that RSI gets to an even healthier spot because you can see it's overbought now. It's still kind of overbought at 61, but not as bad as it was a couple of days ago. But ideally, we would like to see that RSI to at least like a 30, 35, 40, 45 level and at that point I think the Dow would have done you know, would have completed a healthy pullback, and we would want to see if it holds that 50 SMA on this 20-day, one-hour chart. Of course, if it holds it and bounces, that's a continuation of the uptrend. If it breaks it, that's pretty bearish, and we'll reanalyze the situation there. But ideally, you know, I think it's going to pull back here and then end up holding this resistance, old resistance, as a new support and continue the uptrend. That's what I'm personally watching here on the Dow Jones, just waiting to see if it pulls back and does. Uh, sees that healthy little retracement. So back to that uh, five day, five minute very quickly. You guys can see the plateau, the slowdown. We might see that pullback here again, like I just said. Back to the 184 hour. You know, still very overbought here, very overbought at about 75. So ideally, I'd like to see that down, uh, maybe 27,000, uh, 300 point retracement here. That would be pretty solid if we hold above the 50 SMA on the 184 hour. That'll bring down the RSI. That could open up a nice little opportunity for a short term play on some of these um, market ETFs. So Dow Jones Industrial Average, that is what it's looking like through my personal um, perspective here in my personal opinion let me know down below what you guys think so far um you know about these markets their performance over these past couple of days i would love to know so again we hit an eight thousand dollar level in the nasdaq we were down about 40 50 points today down about 0.4.5 percent at the close and you guys can clearly see you know if we zoom in a bit here on the 184 hour chart you know the uptrend is still intact right notice this green this is the uh 50 sma the 50 simple moving average this has been a support over the past couple of weeks, right? And if I just clear um, this drawing set very quickly, because it does look a bit sloppy, you know, take a look at this pattern. Um, let me just zoom in one more time. Take a look at this trend line that I'm drawing out for you guys, right? You can see the uptrend that we're on. We're holding that trend line. We're holding the 50 SMA. And this little retracement, you know, we were overbought on the R side. It's bringing the R side down. We're holding that trend and we're holding that 50 SMA. You know, this retracement, I'm simply looking at at it as a uh, simple little pullback in an overheated NASDAQ, right? So that's looking good. You know, ideally, if it holds here tomorrow, that could be an entry point for TQQQ, which goes up whenever the NASDAQ um, is going up, right? So that could be a very nice bounce back play tomorrow if the, if the markets do recover from the pullback. And obviously, we'll be looking, I'll be looking at the futures tomorrow, you know, throughout the night when I'm awake, seeing, you know, how are they reacting? Are they shifting up? Are they popping up? Are they continuing the sell-off that we saw today in the market? That's going to really help me decide, you know, what am I doing in terms of my trades, right? So NQ, 
that's what it's looking like. You know, if we go to the 20 day one hour, you guys can clearly see, you know, it's still holding that trend line. We're simply pulling back. We're trading above the 180 SMA. That was a support from a couple of weeks ago, several different times, right? So I'm not scared that the market is reversing, that the NASDAQ is reversing. Everything is just pulling back healthily at this point. So that is the market update, guys, for this video. Let me know down below in the comment section again, what are your thoughts on the market? Where do you think we're headed? Are we going to pull back more? Are we going to drop at this point? Or are we going to continue this upswing until the rate cut that we potentially get here at the end of the month and really just continue from there, right? Let me know down below, what do you guys think about that? And let's talk about what I personally did today in terms of my trading. So I noticed early on today that the markets peaked and then the market started to fall as we saw on some of the intraday charts. Let me just reiterate what I'm saying here. Going back to the S&P, you guys can see we peaked and then we fell, right? Going back to the Dow, we peaked and then we fell and then we actually rebounded a bit, but we were still lower from where we peaked in the morning. And the NASDAQ, which was the reddest out of the three indexes today, this one pretty much fell the entire day. You guys can see, you know, 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard, it was already downtrending when the market opened. And I took notice to this, guys. You know, I took notice to this and I noticed how there was a bearish cross here on the one day, one minute the 50 cross below the 180 in terms of the SMAs the green line cross below the 180 which is a very bearish sign and from there I noticed how it was making lower lows and lower highs notice how you know it fought to get back up to the 180 SMA it didn't break out it got rejected at a lower low and then we dumped heavily we popped up and this is actually when I was looking at SQQQ which goes up whenever the NASDAQ is selling off and take a look here guys you know we popped up again lower high from the previous just slightly but it was a lower high and we were getting rejected at this point by the 180 SMA and then when we started to drop I took a position in SQQQ at around 10 o'clock so let's take a look at SQQQ very quickly let's pull it up very quickly and again, this goes up whenever the NASDAQ is selling off. And honestly, guys, I've mentioned this in the previous couple of videos, but I've been watching these market ETFs, these market ETFs that go up when the markets sell off because the markets, in my opinion, have been overheated. So this pullback I've kind of been waiting for. And when we did get that confirmation of the rejection at about 10 a.m. on the NASDAQ, I pulled the trigger on this one. And you guys can see at that point, you know, there was actually a nice margin of of profit opened up from that initial spike this morning in SQQQ. You guys can see we hit 31.50. We pulled back to about 31.30, and that was not a crazy uh, margin. It was about a 0.5% margin. So at that point, I was thinking, you know, we pulled back, we got the double bottom at about 10 a.m., and then we start to spike. I was thinking 0.5%, that's not too bad, right, of a margin. We held a higher low. The uptrend's looking intact on the SQQQ ETF. The NASDAQ is falling all these chips are starting to align right now so I took the position right around here at about $31 and like 37 cents a bit prematurely because although we did get the double bottom um, which is a pretty good bullish reversal sign we didn't fully get the break out of this 50 SMA but I was okay with that because I was watching it actively I was ready to cut my losses if things did go sour and at that point if they were to break if this was to break the 180 SMA support that was where I was going to cut somewhere around here but I did let it ride and then ultimately we did break above that 50 SMA we saw the dump in the NQ and what happened guys SQQQ ended up spiking right so pretty much you know, when we filled the gap up to about 3150, which again was that high from once the market opened, you know, we had again a 0.5% margin. I got in at about 3136 and I sold off once we filled the gap up to pre market. Sure, I left a lot of money on the table, guys. You know, if we look at you know, this larger term time frame, if I were to hold from 3135 all the way up to about $32, if I timed it perfectly, which is very unrealistic, right? I would have made a 2.2% 
profit, right? So 2.2% is what I could have made, but I'm conservative. I'm cool with taking a smaller margin of profit. I'm cool with taking a smaller profit, right? So I took about a 0.5%, um, rather more like a 0.4%, honestly, as we filled the gap up to that pre-market, not really pre-market, but the resistance once the market opens. So that is what I did today in terms of my trading, guys. I hope you all did well in your trading. Let me know down below what did you end up doing today? I would love to know, guys. I love talking to all you guys down below in the comments section. So let's talk very quickly here about a couple of stocks that I have listed on my little piece of paper here on my notes that I am watching. And actually a subscriber, um, a person in the Discord, a Discord member, a person of the StriveSmart community asked me to talk about FedEx. So FedEx is one that I briefly took a look about, FDX here. And this is one that if you look on the longer term time frames on the 184 hour chart this one's actually breaking out right now which is something that i'm really finding attractive actually we can see that the 180 sma and overall guys you know this has just been downtrending and the 180 sma has been acting as a resistance this yellow line you can clearly see it's been pushing down over the past six months and even if we go to the past one year one day you guys can see fedex has just been getting clobbered guys a high of 250 back in september now it's at 150 the stock is almost slashed in half right that is pretty worrisome in terms of um fedex and fedex share shareholders but in terms of shorter term plays here you know we are breaking out of that 180 SMA right which is a very good beginning reversal sign it's not fully reversing yet and I'll get into that right now but it's a good first step so let me just pull out some drawing tools very quickly and we'll analyze FedEx stock so it's clear that it holds above 150 that is what we can base and see you know over this past over these past couple of months that is a level that it's clearly been holding above right and this stock went from 230 to about 150 holy crap in the matter of three weeks that is awful guys this is back when um you know back during the christmas drop when um you know the trade war with china was getting kind of heated this one took a massive hit right and we hit that low at about 150 notice how a couple of weeks ago in the beginning of june we also hit that low at 150 so that's the second confirmation of the bounce on that support and what happened towards the end of june well we hit that level again so we hit that level again confirmed it so that's three bottoms on that support which is a very good sign and from there we made a higher low and then we made that break out of the 180 sma so at this point it's looking good for the beginning of the reversal. We got the triple hold on the support, which is sign one. We got the breakout of the 180 SMA, which is sign two. And now we need to see the third confirmation step, which is going to be a hold above this 169, 168, 170 level, which is a resistance, as you guys can see. And at this point, we haven't fully held it. We haven't fully consolidated on, on top of it quite yet as a new support, which is kind of worrisome but that is what we need to see quite frankly before we potentially test a 175 level 180 and then so forth right and notice how if i stretch this line out a bit more notice how we're fighting to get on top of this resistance that was actually an old support as well a couple of weeks ago or rather months ago back in the march month of 2019 notice how you know this was a uh, support now it's a resistance and i think guys let me drag this out very quickly but i I think, you know, if we do break and fully hold on top of this and then start to run up from there into the 170s, 172s, 173s, not only would that bring the RSI down if we did pop up, pulled back, cooled off a bit, that would bring the RSI down, which is a healthy thing to see. You know, that would be like the fourth confirmation of us filling the gap back up to the next resistance, which is $184. So, you know, really at this point, I'm liking FedEx. We're seeing some good movement here. We just need to see a hold at 170 and a pop up to slowly start to fill the gap up to 185. And if we take a look at the trend line tool from 170 up to 185, guys, that's about an 8 to 10% margin of profit. That is is looking very good on a battered down stock right now that in my opinion you know 
should recover a bit here, you know, in the next couple of months. But again, do your own research, do your own due diligence, do not trade any of these stocks based on my opinion. You have to understand what you're doing for yourself, guys. That is super important. So JNJ is another one that actually reported earnings today. It actually had a red day of about 1.64%. And if we go to the live news, you guys can see they did decently well on their earnings from what I remember here. And let me just pull it up. Um, let's take a look. So, okay, okay, okay. Where is it? I do believe they beat... Oh, here it is, guys. So, okay, I think they beat EPS by 6% or something like that, but I can't seem to find the exact earnings. But nonetheless, you know, now that Johnson & Johnson reported their earnings, I'm interested to see how the stock is going to react here in the next couple of days. We're still, although we did break this little trend line, we're still holding a higher low from the previous. So let's see at this point if this does recover and slowly starts to continue on the uptrend pattern that it's been on over the past couple of months. Obviously, we have a criminal investigation right now that could damper uh, J&J stock here over the next couple of weeks, which obviously I'm being very cautious about that. But if that slowly blows over here, this can be a beautiful dip buy on Johnson & Johnson. The RSI is oversold. We're still holding a higher low from the previous. Uptrend is still intact. Very big company here that usually recovers after the big dips, as you guys can see from the previous massive dip from the asbestos incident you know we recovered quite nicely so i think this could recover we just need to give it some time and it does offer about an eight percent margin of profit so the next one is 3m guys i'm not going to spend too much time on this because i pretty much missed the move but i did want to call it out and recap it because this is something that i called out on sunday's video i, I believe or saturday's video one of these videos i called out 3m from um about 175 173 up to the gap fill at about 178 so it actually filled that gap again i missed the move but if you actually caught this move let me know down below in the comment section but today was a very good for, uh, day for 3m two percent in the green up three dollars and 65 cents so at this point are we going to hold 176, 177, and then maybe gap up to 183? That's what I'm watching right now on 3M. So JP Morgan, banking stocks have been reporting earnings here over the past couple of days. You guys can see JP Morgan reported, what day was this? On the 16th, that was today. So they reported today, and you guys can see... Their estimated was 2.56, 2.82 was their actual for earnings per share, which is very, very good. We got the pullback hold on the 50 SMA. So at this point, it seems like we are gunning. We are pushing for that higher high at about 116, 116.50. So this could open up an interesting uh, entry point tomorrow. Let's say we pull back. We may retest that 50 SMA. Or let's say we pull, or rather not even pull back. Let's say we continue to run. It could open up a nice little um, continuation run entry here, which we could enter into one 115.50, maybe 115.40 as it continues to gun for that higher high. You know, that could be a potential play as well. So I'm going to see how it moves. You know, does it pull back? Does it continue? That's going to be what I'm looking for. So BAC is another banking stock that did end up reporting earnings, I believe, today. Nope, their earnings are tomorrow. So this is actually one that I'm going to be watching to see how it ends up doing, right? How it ends up reacting to earnings. Is the earnings positive, negative? How's guidance, you know, how does that affect the stock? That could end up opening up some opportunities tomorrow. BAC, it does offer some margin up to about 30 bucks, which has been a resistance over the past couple of months, as you guys can clearly see from this trend line. So those are just a couple of stocks that I'm watching, guys. Very quickly, some ETFs, you know, crude oil has been done. If we hold 57.50 as a new support, you know, if we hold that and fill the gap back up to $60, you know, UWT could be a potential play here that I'm watching. It's been hammered. It may be due for a little bit of a bounce back here. You know, U gas and natural gas. Natural gas took quite a dump today, guys. But if you look on the trend here, let me just clear the drawing set very quickly. 
Although we did break that 180 SMA support, which is not too good of a sign, we're still holding that trend that I just drew out for you guys at a higher low from the previous. So at this point, since we took the big dip, since RSI, the RSI is very oversold, we could potentially rebound here, which is what I'm watching for. And if we do, you guys, guys, which has been hammered, it was down 11% today, this could be a nice reversal play. So I'm going to wrap up the video here, guys. If you enjoyed it, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. Feel free to subscribe to the channel if you do want to see more content from me and hit that notification bell so you're notified every single time that I do make a video. Drop a comment down below. What are your thoughts on the market? What did you trade today? Let me know. I would love to know what you're thinking from your point of view. And if you want to be further connected with the Strive Smart community, join that Facebook down below. Join that Discord group chat down below and follow me on Instagram if you want to be further connected with me on that platform all those links are down below so thank you all for watching i'll catch you all in the next video peace out